first problem tells us that a bullet has an average acceleration equal to this quantity, 5.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second squared, <coughs> which is pretty close to 10,000 times the acceleration of gravity, uh, and accelerates down the barrel of a gun in 8.6 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. Now, we can't necessarily, uh, well, the acceleration of the bullet in the gun really is not uniform, but we're going to model this as if it was uniform, so this is just the acceleration. So the acceleration, you know, you fire the gun, you pull the trigger, the bullet accelerates down the barrel. Uh, it's a given rate. It takes a given amount of time to get there. And uh, you have two of the things you need to solve a uh, uniformly accelerated motion problem. What's the third? Well, it could be initial velocity, final velocity, or the displacement. Well, you try to find the final dis velocity and displacement, but you know the initial velocity before you pull the trigger, the bullet is just sitting there. So the initial velocity, relative to the barrel at least, is zero. So what do we do? Well, I let people kind of uh, dictate this for me, and people say, okay, well, first thing, average acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in clock time. I said, yeah, that's good. That comes from the definition of average acceleration. And we know uh, the average acceleration in the time interval, we can use that to find the change in velocity. Now, again, you want to check this out, okay? Acceleration, average acceleration is the average rate of change of velocity with respect to clock time, and that leads us directly to this definition. So this is good reasoning. And it goes all the way back to the definition. Now, we didn't really start from the definition, but the definition leads us immediately to this. So we can rearrange this, and you know, the obvious idea that delta V is average acceleration times delta T, and we're going to get a result there. Okay? And then, what are we going to do? Okay, now we know average acceleration, delta V, V naught, delta T, and A. What can we do? Well, we know V naught and delta V. And uh, again, the class picked this right up. Uh, delta V is VF minus V naught. We know V naught, so we can find VF. And intuitively, we know what velocity we started at. We know how much velocity changes. So we're just going to be able to add the two and get our final velocity. That comes directly from the relationship here, but it's a very intuitive relationship. And we're going to get the final velocity. Uh, then what can we do? Well, now we know initial velocity, final velocity, delta T, A, delta V. The only thing we don't know is delta S, our displacement. Uh, well, actually, there are two things we don't know. We don't know the average velocity. We don't know the displacement. So what can we get from what we know? Well, we know that we can average VF and V naught to get our average velocity. And so average velocity is VF plus V naught over 2 multiplied by delta T. Uh, and I've circled the delta T and the V naught and the VF because those are things we were either given or we found. And now we're going to be able to get our, v, uh, our, our average velocity. Uh, then our definition of average velocity is average rate of change of position with respect to clock time, change of position divided by change in clock time. So we can rearrange this to get delta S equals V bar delta T. And that's going to work out very easily. Then at the end, we're given a, 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 a net force. Okay, a net force in the bullet is 10,000 newtons. So we want to find the mass. Well, we can. Okay, we're going to come down here, and I'm just going to map out what we did up here, and then we'll see how we get the mass and the net force. Well, clearly, mass, net force, and acceleration are going to be related in a very simple way. So if we want to do a diagram of how we moved from what we were given, average acceleration delta T and V naught, to our final results, final velocity, and delta S, uh, we moved just by following our noses. We didn't worry about what we were trying to find. We just took what we had, and we put it together to find something new. And then we reassessed, OK, what do we have now? What can we find next? So we started. Uh, with these three quantities, we noticed that uh, average acceleration and delta T are related to delta V in a simple way. 
Okay, so if we know average acceleration of delta t, we can get delta v. And if our intuition is good, and if we know what acceleration really means, we know that we can multiply that by delta t to get delta v. But in any case, we can get this relationship from the definition of average acceleration. And we get our delta v. And then, um, and we're not going to end all the details now, we put delta v together with v naught to get vf, which we then put together with v naught to get v bar, which we then put together with delta t to get delta s. And we've got all these quantities in sequence. Then we can put net force and mass together with our acceleration because net force is mass times acceleration. And now we understand that if we know any two of these, we can find the third. We're given the net force. We've got the acceleration that was actually given. So we easily find the mass. Now go, I'm going to go ahead and put the numbers in here. The numbers are easily enough found. Uh, multiplying average acceleration by delta t, we get about 450 meters per second. You can do this with your calculator and get it more accurate. Uh, we started at zero, so adding the change in velocity, we get a final velocity of 450 meters per second. Initial velocity is zero, so when we average that with our 450 meter per second final velocity, um, we're going to get, uh, and I've got something here that doesn't make sense. Let me think through this and fix it. That delta t shouldn't be there. Clearly, average velocity is the average of initial and final velocity. Um, I'm not sure why I had the delta t there or how it got there, but uh, obviously an error. OK, so anyhow, uh, we average the 450 meters per second with the zero, and we get 225 meters per second for the average velocity, uh, which we then multiply by the delta t. And of course, the delta t would go there if we we're trying to find delta s. And since we had a little discussion about delta s also, uh, I think things just kind of slipped in there. Uh, anyhow, your average velocity is delta s over delta t. So delta s is average velocity times delta t. If you multiply 225 meters per second by the 8.6 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds, you're going to get something pretty close to 0 0.2 meters. It's not a real long barrel, OK? We're not talking about a rifle. We're talking about a fairly long barrel pistol. Um, and then to get the mass, we divide net force by the acceleration. And uh, net force was 10,000 newtons. And the acceleration, um, 5.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second squared, comes out around 0 0.02 kilograms, a little closer to 0 0.018, uh, but round that off to 0 0.02 to give you a ballpark. So if you do these calculations to check yourself, you'll see what we've got. You'll see, you'll see if you came out close. And if you disagree with my calculations, please let me know. We'll see, be sure to try to reconcile it.